so yesterday we started talking about group think and the characteristics. We covered all that yesterday, correct? Consumer psychology. Consumer psychology? Okay, perfect. All right. So um, let's talk about types of group behavior. Now, when we talk about group behavior, this is when large amounts of people are in one place at one time. <coughs> you not hear yesterday? <coughs> I mean, we totally noticed. We mourned. <laughs> you really weren't? <laughs> I know. I saw you in the morning. Yeah, um, I want to that. Um, I mean, I'm not putting, I'm trying to put your uh, business on blast. I'm just. It's like, why would you stay here and not fill it in? Okay, I'm going to get on track for right now. Okay, de-individualization is what happens when we put large groups of people together. And that is one of the big things. Um, <clears throat> crowd surfing. Anyone here have done it? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Smart people. All day, I've had big people like super proud of themselves. I'm like, oh my God, this is disgusting. Okay, for women, it's actually really not a good thing for us ladies. Why, ladies? You get gross. Yeah, that's one reason By gross old men, not that young, handsome men groping you is a good thing, but, I mean, you're just getting groped and, like, just straight up, ugh, okay? And the reason why, no, most of the men at the concert who would grope you if you're crowd surfing on a one-to-one -one ratio is not going to walk up to you and go, ha! <laughs> and then walk away. <laughs> However, if you're crowd surfing, would, would most of them take the opportunity to do that? Maybe. I'm not trying to criminalize. Maybe women do it too. Maybe they. Maybe a chick wanted to do it to you. Who knows? Let's be inclusive to all people. Maybe someone really wanted to do it in the crowd. However, on a one-to-one -one ratio, are people going to do that? Thank God we live in a society that that's clearly not okay. Um, however, in large groups, is it okay? Do people do that? Absolutely. We've all heard of situations where gang rapes have occurred, correct? Um, uh, a couple months ago, there was a huge one on a college campus where uh, one college girl was gang raped by eight men. To rape one woman is horrific. To have one man rape one woman is horrific. De-individualization de is when one man raping one woman is terrible. But then seven other men do the same thing. Wait, where was that? Um, it happens more frequently than you think. Um, yeah. I don't remember what school it was. Was it was one wait, of the was bigger it? universities in the United States? There was one was lady in India last year who was gang raped by thirty six men. What in, in India? In India. No, was there something? Happened. There was something. In uh, some of them were arrested. Not all of them. I mean, it's thirty six men. Like, there's something. The I, I did some. Some countries just like it. It's not as big of a deal in India. If you really want to watch a really, really, really disgusting documentary, um, India's Daughter, it's the most depressing thing you'll ever see about a woman who gets gang raped and they literally just toss her body off a bus and have no remorse. And they do terrible things to her, mutilate her body and have no, and they don't understand why they're in prison. <laughs> it's the most disgusting thing, patriarchy at its finest, but we're getting back on track. Okay, de-individualization. People think they can behave any way they want in a large group. Because in, in the end, no one will ever tell the difference. That's why mob mentality is really dangerous. Okay? Um, every time we've had some sort of mob mentality and stuff like that, um, people start doing things they normally wouldn't do. Correct? Okay? Uh, same type of thing that happens. Uh, group polarization is the strengthening of shared beliefs. People who discuss shared views will come to believe them more strongly. Uh, that is our election. <laughs> that we just had. Uh, with the fake news, whatever you're political, whether you're liberal or conservative, you were only seeing news that supported your opinions, correct? No. I think it depends what you read. On like the social media, on, like on social media, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff, those are the continuing things. Hopefully we're all educated enough that you have to go to like more of the source of information, you have to pay attention to where these sources are coming from, but essentially. Uh, a lot of us were in our own little cocoon of what we thought. If you were a Democrat, you were getting a ton of Democrat information. If you're a Republican, you're getting a ton of Republican information, and that's where you lived. If you're friendly with a lot of hardcore Democrats, you're going to get pulled into believing more of the hardcore Democrat stuff. If you are a hardcore Republican, you can hang out. If you're friends with a lot of hardcore Republicans, and you're more of a moderate, you can get pulled towards that direction. It's that way about anything. If you have a friend who's particularly passionate about mint ice cream, I am that friend of yours, and I am very passionate about mint chocolate chip ice cream. If I really got on my soapbox to tell you why it's the best ice cream in the world, you would be persuaded too. And you'd be like, all right, mint chocolate chip ice cream is pretty boss. Okay, first of all, it's cream. Everyone likes cream. 
second all, mint. Fresh breath. Clean. <laughs> or like those things. Okay? Anyway. And chocolate. And chocolate. <laughs> Hello! Okay? Anyway. So, polarization. When you have extreme uh, extremes, you pull more people that way. Hence why, when we typically elect people, um, they're typically more of extremes. Which is why, um, when people are coming up, like Republicans had like 500 candidates, correct? And then they narrowed it down, okay, for the convention, okay? During that time period, everyone was uh, fine, and then once uh, Trump became the nominee, he became a little bit more extreme, correct? Because he had to gain all the rest of the party, he just didn't have, you know, and those are different types of things. Compliance. So these are things you can use today to get more people to do exactly what you want them to do. Isn't that what we want in our lives? Yes. I wish I could get more people right now to do what I'd like to, for them to do. Like, for instance, I would like Toby to stop eating poop. But that's another issue. He's sick again. From eating poop? Yeah. Oh. That's not good. That's my other boss calling me. Oh, well. So... Foot and door. Yeah, all he does is eat poop. He's passionate. Foot and door technique. When you ask for a small commitment, and after gaining compliance, asking for a bigger commitment. That's what foot and door is. You ask for something small that takes really not that much, and then ask them for something bigger. So a perfect example of this would be, Mr. Nelson asked me to be on this thing called the instructional leadership team, where Teachers from all across the school come together and come up with ways to try to improve instruction and improve the classroom across the school. And I was like, oh, okay, that sounds cool. Give up one Monday a month, and we sit, get together and we talk about issues the school have and try to come up with solutions. Got it. Within uh, two months of me being on this board at a brand new school, didn't know any of these teachers because it's brand new, I was then running ILT. And here I am, two and a half years later, Still running ILT. Foot and door. I agree just to come in and share my opinion. And now I spend most of my waking hours doing ILT stuff. Foot and door. What would be an example from your lives of uh, foot and door? Someone asks you for something small and then requires more or asks you for more after you said yes. What do you got? There you go. One person needs a ride once, and then all of a sudden they're at your car every single day waiting for their ride. And you're just like, how did this happen? How did this happen? Um, how about, what would be another example? Where you ask for something small. Um, how about when you join like a sports team? If you see like a sports team on campus, say like football is a perfect example. You want to sign up for football, and then it comes with all these extra costs. Like the pads, the helmets, you gotta get the cleats, you gotta get all that. Baseball is the same type of thing, you need to have all these other things. Soccer, same type of thing. What else would be an example? Oh my god, I don't wanna talk to myself all day. Uh, like getting a puppy. Because... Getting. Yeah. Preach it, sister. Okay, what do you got? So, like, you think it's gonna be, like, all cute and, like, dandy and everything, but then, like, you have to, like, potty train it and, like, bring it to the vet and, like, Try yes. to stop it from eating poop at every waking moment. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and, like, you have to take him out on, like, a schedule. Yeah, like, foot and door. Like, super cute. He looks up at you, and he's like, I'm so cute. And you're like, oh, my God, you are so cute. So you take him home, and your whole life is turned upside down. I love my little man, but I'm so tired of talking about poop. How do people afford you? I'm looking at you people. You're children. You are someone's <laughs> child. How did your parents afford you? I have no idea. Yes. Um, well, it's something like, Spotify, where they're like, download Spotify, and you do it, and they're like, now get premium for two months for 99 cents. And you're like, okay, that's a good idea. And they're like, oh, just continue premium for like $10 a month. There you go, perfect example. Okay, I was sitting in my living room over uh, winter break, and we were listening music, listening to music, and McCray asked for an artist to play on our Alexa, and Alexa's like, nope, don't have it. And then she's like, if you want it, you can pay. It's a free trial of Amazon Unlimited. And McCray was like, haha, this isn't my account. Yes, I'd like to try it. And so we now have it. And this was last year. So I've now had this being charged in my account for a year now because McCray had a free trial and I forgot. And so here we are. I now pay for this. It was a free trial and now I'm starting. Have you ever played the video games where you can pay? You have to pay to complete the game. It starts for free. They get you addicted. 
and then you have to pay, that's it. All right, door and face. Now, keep in mind, on your test, you're going to have plenty of examples. Your test is super, super heavy on um, applications this week. So if you don't know your applications and can't identify, you're in a big trouble for this week. Uh, door and face, asking for a large commitment and being refused than asking for a smaller commitment. You ask for something big on purpose to be rejected. Okay? When you ask someone for something big, knowing you're going to be rejected, it's an ego boost. Doesn't it feel good to say hell no to people? Hello? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just so ridiculous, it's like hell no. Then when you ask for something small, because you've built up their ego, that they're going to give you, like, ah, you know what, I'm going to help you out. Okay? And then they'll do the second thing. However, you played them from the start, so are they really doing you the benefit? No, you're manipulating them. And that's what these are all about. So what would be an example of you ask for something big, and then knowing you're going to get rejected just to get it. Simone? If you're like, hey, Mom, can I go to Aruba for a week with my friends over spring break? And she's like, really, are you insane? Okay, you could like, be well, captured and killed. And then you're like, well, okay, can I... Holloway, isn't that where she died? Isn't that where she died? Are you too young for that? Mm -hmm. Holloway, isn't that where she died? Yeah, mm -hmm. some girl went there on spring break with her friends on a school trip, and, and she said, died well, and murdered her. Oh, my God. Not, can I go to a concert that week instead? Well, that's nothing compared to going to <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Works. Cat. What about, like, when you're trying to make a deal with someone, so, like, if you want to get it for, like, like wait. I lost it. Like, you said, yeah, negotiating. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. when you, like, start, like, bigger to, like. Absolutely. Uh, someone said when people all put on their house to market for 300000 but what they really want is 250 is really what they want. So they're willing to negotiate and stuff like that. That's a perfect example. Okay, no one's going to pay $300,000 for a shack. Oh, yes, they all will, because it's in South Tampa. <laughs> okay, so when we talk about gaining compliance and door and face technique, we're dealing with the uh, norm of reciprocity. Norm of reciprocity is what makes Christmas terrible. Okay, I don't know about you, but doesn't it stress you out when someone buys you a gift and you weren't prepared? And they, like, have it for you, and you're like, oh, my God, yeah. I totally left your gift at home as you're on your way to the mall the moment you get away because you have to find something now. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to spend too much because their gift was kind of crappy, so you have to find, like, the perfect gift that shows that you were thoughtful but not, like, you don't want to spend too much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just say that it's still on my mail and, like, Amazon messed up the orders. Oh, because Amazon messes up a lot of orders, huh? That's what I would say to you. Most people on this side Thanks. It was kind of a dig and an insult all at the same time. That was a door in the face. That was, it was like an insult, but kind of nice. So, I don't know really how to take it, so I'm going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Norma, I have a video clip for you. Is that okay Wait, with you? I don't understand. Let me show you my video clip, and that will make sense. You're okay. You're okay. I got a video clip. It's very helpful. And it's uh, Sheldon Cooper. Big bang. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. More of a you want me a present? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> I don't know, because it's... It's no penny! I know that you think you're being generous, but so the foundation... Sorry. You bought me a present? Uh-huh. Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> I don't know, because it's Christmas? No, oh, Penny. I know you think you're being generous, but the foundation of gift giving is reciprocity. But you haven't given me a gift. You've given me an obligation. Don't feel bad, Penny. It's a classic rookie mistake. My first Hanukkah with Sheldon, he yelled at me for eight nights. <laughs> It's okay, you don't have to give me anything in return. Of course I do. The essence of the custom is that I now have to go out and purchase for you a gift of commensurate value and representing the same perceived level of friendship as that represented by the gift you've given me. <laughs> well, it's no wonder suicide rates skyrocket this time of year. It's actually not lying. I thought suicide rates dropped this time of year. No, it's increases. People feel alone. They feel lonely. Impressed. Also the That's Wait, really so what you're going to argue. So it's, so it's argue just a negative people. feeling about, like, guilt? Kind yeah, of? so if oh, I came awesome. in today and I had this beautiful handmade card for you and was like, I celebrate you as a person, I think you're really wonderful, would that make you feel kind of awkward? Yeah. Kind of guilty? Yeah. That you don't care about me that way? That you don't even think Is about me? True? Is what, you wouldn't even put in the effort to make me a card? Like, that's so mean. I just spent all this time on this card. Reciprocity. <laughs> 
<laughs> if someone does something for you, then you're going to want to do it for them. Reciprocity. Oh. All right. <coughs> Minimize. Why aren't you minimizing? Okay, so your next one is foot and door technique. Did we do this one? Yeah, Just yes. kidding. All right, so your next one is your low ball technique. You ask for absolutely minimum. Once they say yes, then you up the ante. Okay? So getting a commitment from a person, then raising the cost of that commitment. So, for instance, um, someone came up with this. This is not my original idea. Fraternities, sororities, perfect. They say, oh, my God, you should be a part of our fraternity. You should be a part of our sorority because we want to be your friend. Hell no. Do you know how much those things cost? They cost a lot of money to buy your friends. It's a huge cost. Okay, so to even walk around in most colleges' campuses in order to be a part of, um, what's it called, Greek, like the first day of Greek life and stuff like that, um, you have to uh, pay $200 to even do like the walk, where you go into each of the houses and stuff like that, you get to meet everyone and stuff like that. It's like a reserve, like it's kind of like a reserving your kind of spot, because they have to plan everything out, then they give you food and stuff like that, so it's even just like participating. Then they meet you, and then you have to pay like, the reservation, like re like sign up fee, and then they induct you, and then yeah, you have to pay like a hundred bucks a month. You have to pay for your T-shirts, which they buy a T-shirt like every time you go to the bathroom, you have to buy a new T-shirt. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like all of these different types of things. But you do get something out of it. The whole idea is to have friends for life, you know, brothers. For and then you pay a lot of money for them. You have to pay for the letters, you have to pay for the rent, stuff like that. So, Mom? I was a super front foot in the door. Okay, because it is it's asking nothing. It's giving you something. Foot and door is kind of like, um, it's, has, um, it's a good question. The problem with the difference between low ball technique is that front, they say, oh my god, we just want your friendship. Oh, so is it if you're like, hey, I want to help you out with... Yeah, like for instance, when people give you a sample at the mall when you're walking by, please know they don't think you're hungry. That's not why they're giving you a sample. If there's no, like, I want to do this for you for your life to be better. They want you to try it, so you make a, the impulse decision to buy it. We, that's clear, correct? With lowball technique, the, the whole thing is based on you completely. Once you buy in or really want it, then the price changes. The more you want it, the increase of price. So if you really want to live in the house on campus, so now, now you've been inducted, it costs you about like two grand. If you want to live in the house and be the epicenter of this whole wonderful Greek life, then you have to pay an additional amount. So the costs just keep building, and that's where it comes from. Low ball. To be a part of it is like, oh my god, we just want to be your friend. So, is it like so now that you are our friend, okay, now you're going to pay $1,000. Is it like website subscriptions where they keep raising the rates? So like, I know some, okay, so it's kind of just like a director, and they like design websites, but they use this like software to like get the, it's just like the website design software, I think. And they use it and have a subscription, and then like every month they just would start like raising their rates. To, to a degree, yeah, because it seems affordable. And then you are, as you're kind of using it and stuff like that, it becomes less and less affordable. And they're getting more from it and stuff like that. So that would be low ball technique. Um, and that's not all. It happens to be my favorite. I love infomercials. I just can't help it. Because like when you watch an infomercial, it seems like everything in that person's life has either gone horribly wrong or horribly right. You know what I mean? Like, do people really like see infomercial people and be like, oh my god, that's what I want to do? So is this like a, damn it, I'm at the very end of celebrity fame? You know? Because you've seen these people before, so they're kind of known. Or is that really what they want? Maybe that's what they want to be, you know? So I'm like always so perplexed. Is this a terrible thing that's happened to you or the greatest thing? And I sit there and I wonder that. You know? I, I would think it's a terrible thing. Why? Because they're making more money than I am, for sure. But it's like a, uh, I don't know. See, the problem is I don't think I could, like, talk about a mop. Like, for four hours. Do you think they'd want to, like... <coughs> have you ever watched them do, like, the jewelry and stuff? 
I like, how do you talk I about it? Yeah, I don't too. watch it. <laughs> you don't watch it? you got to watch no. QVC, man. Check no, it out. It's horrible. It's oh, my like God. But, like, watch it and, like, try to, like, interpret, like, is this this person's choice to be there or is it one of the, like, the last well, stops? Well, you guys are cash. My favorite Sophia Bergara trying to sell the Ninja Coffee. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, they make me actually really uncomfortable when I think about it. Like, I have to switch the channel. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I love QVC. I don't, I've don't. i never bought a damn thing off QVC, but I have found myself watching it. I'm just mesmerized. Like, how can you talk about this hideous necklace for four hours? And people are buying it. Like, when you see, like, people are buying this crap on a regular basis. Like, it's just insane. All right, here we go. On your whiteboard, what is this an example of? Wait, what? I still don't understand the whole point of that's not all. Like, what that's is, not all. They add to it. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, like you can get it? like your coffee ninja thing. Yeah. And oh, you oh, can get oh, a God. second coffee ninja yeah. thing. <laughs> and <laughs> Sophia Vergara will deliver it to your house, and my husband will own six of them. He loves <laughs> Sophia Vergara. He loves her. All right, here we go on your whiteboard. Please tell me what is. Um, I asked my mom if I can go to Disney World, and she says, "Hell no!" And then I'm like, "Ha ha! Can I go to Busch Gardens?" And she's like, "Oh my god, it's so much closer!" Hell yes. Here, what is it? Door face. You don't get a cookie, man. What? <laughs> that wasn't the arrangement. Oh. He was so proud of himself. He was so proud of himself. On your whiteboard. That was so cute. The whole time he wasn't even looking at me, he was looking at the car. Like, it was so adorable. Sorry, man. I will tell you when it's a cookie question. Is that fair? Okay. You can stop looking at him. They're really uncomfortable. All right, here we go. On your whiteboard. Please tell me what is it called when? Stop wasting my ink, Milan. I don't care. I don't want it. Okay. On your whiteboard. Please tell me what is it called when? I invite Mulai over to my house for a dinner party, and she's like, oh, my God, I'm so excited. I'm like, oh, my God, me too. So she comes to my house, and there's, like, a chef de cuisine there, and they're pouring, and they're making all this incredible food. I'm like, oh, my God, thanks for coming. Um, it's going to be about $50. And she's like, what? What is it, Hannah? Um, low, ball. low ball. She just thought she was coming over for dinner, and then I'm, like, slapping her. Across the face with a cost of 50 bucks. Shocking. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is it called when I ask Dibs to um, take out my trash one day. And then I'm like, oh my god, Dibs, can you take out this trash and do this for me? And he's like, um, and he does it. And then the next day I'm like, oh my god, Dibs, can you do this, this, and this? And what is it, Sophia? But indoor, that's who I am. I'm such a sucker. I'm too nice. I'm not very good at it. So that's why I don't leave my room. I would say no. Hmm? I would say no. He would say no. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. I, I know you did. I know he would give me the slope. I'm like what? <laughs> and then you would walk on over. But I wouldn't put you in that situation, Dips. I wouldn't ask you to do that. On your whiteboard, please tell me. If you do this, Sydney, I will do this, 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 and I will do this. What is it? Yes, Marissa. That's not all. That's not all. On your whiteboard, please tell me. Give me one example from your own personal life looking at any of these four ways to gain that compliance. You can use foot and door technique, door and face. You can use um, low ball or that's not all. Give me one example. And the best example that makes me laugh gets a cookie. Doesn't have to be a true example, by the way. See, this is a game changer for Drew. Drew's not really thinking. <laughs> Oh my god, you people can't come up with examples. We've been giving like four or five examples for every single one. <laughs> you give me an example then. Let's just try with that.
Do you have to write what technique it is? Nah. I do the dishes and then she don't write again. Do a lot more chores. There you go. He literally came up to our car and he was like, Yeah. Oh, wait. Really? Ah, that sucks. All right. Share your example with someone near you, quickly. I'm looking right at you, Milan. I know. Turn to Desiree and share what you would have written down. Oh, what? Oh, attention? Is that what you're doing? We're like, wait, when it would it be like, look, if you were in Greece and they were like, oh, you can't give these little kids money because if you give them money, these little beggars. If you give them money, they'll just keep asking for more money. Is that what's wrong? Can I talk to you guys? But in the door. All right. Wait, why isn't it low ball? Because you don't get anything back. Yeah, but eventually you're so invested in it that you have to spend money. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, Brittany wins. That's a real life example. That sucks, man. That sucks. Brittany uh, brought her uh, brother and sister to Moe's once on Monday. Every Monday. How was Wednesdays? Yeah, but then you have to eat Moe's. I don't. Why can't oh, you eat most? Because who wants? That's I can't sad. have dairy, so who wants a burrito without cheese and oh, sour cream? So sad. Me. Or the case. Yeah, I would. I would yeah. do that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Social loafing and social facilitation. I'm skipping obedience tomorrow. I'm doing obedience with Milgram, so I'm skipping it. I'm going straight to social facilitation, which is on the back. All right, social facilitation is the tendency for the presence of other people to have a positive impact on the performance of an easy task. Essentially, you perform better when people are watching. An example of this, which is one of my favorite internet videos, is Alan Iverson losing his damn mind at a press conference talking about, you talking about practice? Practice? You're asking me questions about practice. Practice. Losing his damn mind, because a reporter got wind that Alan Iverson was not really working hard at practice, hanging out, doing nothing, and just kind of bumping around. However, that night he showed up at the game and had one of his highest shooting percentages nights of his entire career. So, does Alan I Iverson have a problem performing when needed? Does he take practice that serious? No. However, I'm so grateful someone asked him a question because it's a great question. And it's a great video. If you have, you've never seen it, practice. practice. Can we watch it? No. It's a guy losing his mind about practice. But you've seen it, haven't you? Yeah. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm. He's literally losing his mind for like yeah. six minutes and says practice like a thousand times. Practice. And just keeps coming back to it. It's fantastic. Okay. However, that night he goes out and performs one of the best nights he's ever uh, played on the court. And clearly he performs better in front of people. Does not put that much effort in practice. And here we are. Uh, social facilitation, uh, your man Nick Dibbs said you guys were pretty terrible the day uh, before your performance uh, and some judging thing and um, that day, the time you performed in front of the judge and you guys were great and you guys did incredibly well. Apparently that's common. Yeah, like that's common yeah. That the day before like a play performance or a choral performance, you guys are awful and then you pull it together. That's social facilitation. Any questions about that? Okay. Any of you perform better in front of people? I'm not. I'm one of those people who like definitely just shuts down. Just sits on stage and cries. And that's just who I am. Alright, your next one is social loafing. Someone put your phone away. Uh, so social loafing is when uh, the tendency for people to put less effort into a simple task when working with the task with others. Have you noticed I do not do projects? I don't do any. There's none. You'll never see a project from me because A, I don't care what you can do at 1 o'clock in the morning the day your projects do. Can you agree that's exactly when you'd be working on my project? Yes. <laughs> Damn. Okay? I also do not put you in groups to work on projects or do anything, really. I, you should be able to talk to a person when we do a turn. 
you can handle that. But I don't have you work on something with a project because I know your IQ collectively goes down when you're with other people. Can we agree? You do not put that much work into it. You as individuals are very smart, articulate young adults, and I appreciate you individually. If I put you in a three-pack with, with two other people, your IQ plummets significantly and your output of work is crap. Can we agree? Yes? Okay? Every single one of us, it's the same way. If you put me in a group of two other teachers, I'm not going to be as stunningly amazing as I usually am. Is that guy the thing for playing solitaire? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, Got like yeah. that <laughs> yes, Wait, yes, yes. <laughs> and with, is there anything you'd like to follow that up with? I know, I was wondering if it had anything to do with that. Yeah, because he's not paying attention. He's not paying attention. Oh, no, yeah. It's like group projects. That's why, that's, yeah. When you do a group okay. project, do you put your heart and soul into it? Or do you do the absolute minimum in order to get through? No, I And then you have a kid who doesn't do a damn thing, but his name still gets put on the damn yeah. poster. Oh, I hate that so much. But playing the odds, every single one, there's a couple of you in here who are that guy that everybody no, hates. I'm just, I'm just I do. I take over. Someone's going to do it. Someone's going to do it. It's right. All right, so attitudes. Here we go. We're killing it. By the way, we got to get through it. So attitude. Um, attitude is a tendency to respond positively or negatively towards a certain po person, object, idea, or situation. Okay. So you're either positive response or negative response. That's your basic attitude. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, Kim Kardashian. It's interesting. I feel like if I asked you before the robbery, everyone would be like, thumbs down. Now people are feeling bad for the girl. All right. No, I like people before the robbery. She's just not posting again. I read somewhere. She's just not posting. It's cost her a million. She is. But like, with Kanye, with his like, thing it was a whole political stunt for insurance because he gets insurance for all of his concerts and all the merchandise and everything it's like the so they staged a robbery no not the robbery Kanye's breakdown him getting, getting oh it cost him 30 million dollars the insurance gives him back 30 million dollars that doesn't make so much money off this well, Kim Kardashian, every week she wasn't posting. She went, like, silent after, which makes a lot of sense. Um, she lost a million dollars a week. Wow. Wow. Profit, I think it's worth it. Like, she probably goes crazy. She because just started by the Yeah, she started by the Oh, my God, thank God. I know. <laughs> I thought the world was a little bright. I saw my social media. You know what I mean? Kim ago. Kardashian's back. Well, All right. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah. It's been, like, a week. <laughs> Cookie, <laughs> you are just the saddest creature. He's been looking at it the whole time. He's making everything uncomfortable. It's just easier this way. Please don't judge. He's just so sad. <laughs> Look how big his smile <laughs> Oh, my God. All right, Cookie's thumbs up. Um, mint chocolate chip ice cream. You already know. <gasps> Deja, get out of my classroom. Just go to Nelson's office and just sit it's there and so wait. Just, just oh, kidding, so but good. you're wrong. <laughs> All right, here we go. So when we talk about an attitude, there's an emotional component, a behavioral component, and a cognitive component. Every real opinion you have. So obviously I asked you incredibly stupid, superficial things like Kim Kardashian. No one's life in here is completely shaped. Maybe Mackenzie's. We're not really sure yet. Um, it's completely shaped by Kim Kardashian, but we have an opinion on it. Opinion's not directly an attitude. I just couldn't come up with a good one. If I asked you, what is your opinion on President Trump? All right, President-elect Trump. Okay? Everyone here ranges from incredibly positive to incredibly negative. Every reason, whether it's positive or negative, okay, is going to have an emotional, a behavioral, and a cognitive component. Okay? No one especially at this point, has no opinion on Trump. However, if you weren't watching the Sessions hearings today, for, it was crazy. There were so many protests and people getting thrown in jail today. It was insane. So, uh, for Sessions, um, for the Attorney uh, General. It's funny because Sessions so. hates porn, but Donald Trump himself has appeared at like three sophomore porns before. It's like, what you doing? <laughs> Where does these contacts come from? Simone, go away. 
<laughs> Thank you, Simone. Thank you, Simone. Have a good day, Simone. But whatever your opinion is, there's going to be an emotional, a behavioral, and a cognitive opinion, a cognitive reason for your opinion for Tom. Whether you like him or not, there's going to be a component for it. Now, when we talk about it, they're not always uh, attitudes and poor predictors of behaviors unless it's incredibly strong. Just because you don't like Trump doesn't mean you're going to go and protest. Does that make sense? Just because you really like Trump doesn't mean you're going to go out and to go to a rally. It's not a good indicator of behavior. So when we talk about attitudes, we have to talk about uh, the formation. So how do we get there? How do you get an opinion? Are we done? Yes. 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 <laughs> Fine. You've got a lot done.